All right, Coach, who do you have with you today? This is Joseph Paler. Joseph Paler. And Joseph, uh, play center field, don't you? Yes, sir. And uh, understand that, well, I, I saw some of your games last year. I was very impressed. Uh, uh, brought a lot of speed to the team. I saw that. Uh, good at the plate as well. I understand that you uh, got an uh, offer here from Grambling. You want to talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, so um, Grambling University is located um, in Louisiana. I'm not quite sure exactly where, <laughs> but um, it's really close to home. Um, got a pretty good offer and excited about continuing, continuing my career, if that's what's in store for me after this year. Awesome. Where is home? Um, I'm originally from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and I also live in Dallas, Texas. So it is really close. It's down in the Gulf. And yeah. Awesome. And uh, what, was, uh, what was your freshman year like here at NEO? Um, it was different. I mean, it was a really big transition coming from a um, big city like um, Houston and Rice University. I mean, quite in every aspect, a, a change. It was, it was different. Culture but, shock. I mean, it was a good environment for um, doing what we're actually here to do, play baseball and get better and improve on our skills. And I mean, I feel like it was a very good fit for what I needed last year. How did, uh, how did NEO improve some of those skills that you came with? Um, coming in, I feel like I was a little raw in some areas and uh, with Coach Ward's help, um, become a better batter um, fundamentally, defensively, base running wise. It, really help improve my game. Anything, do you have any personal goals or expectations coming into your uh, second season? Um, we want to get on base more often. We mm -hmm. want to strike out less. And you know, basically with my speed, I want to be able to steal as many bases as possible to get myself in score position to help the team win. And I mean, it's just basically Get on base. That's have you, have you set any specific goals when it comes to stealing bases? I mean, this this game I'm going to go for two or anything like that, or do you just go into it and give you take what they give you? Um, you go in with an overall goal, but each game it's pretty much first things first. I got to get on base. That's yeah. that's pretty much it. Coach, can you uh, take a minute to talk about uh, Mr. Paler's first year? Well, Joseph, uh, he came in as a transfer. Uh, he spent his first two years in college at Rice University mm -hmm. um, and then transferred in here last year. And uh, Joseph was a draft, I can't remember what round. Um, the 27th? 27th round out of high school. He, he, you know, he, when he says raw, what you had was that you had a young man that had great tools, um, you know, great speed especially. Uh, he does have good strength as well and has continued to get stronger, really is uh, very active in the weight room. Uh, what I've seen over the last you know, and, and last year was kind of his first real year of, of uh, playing the games, college games, because at Rice, he, you know, it was a redshirt year, his first year, uh, went so, through some things the second year, was looking for an opportunity to kind of rebound, get back into the draft, have a chance to get drafted again and play some pro ball. Uh, so really last year was really, really a unique freshman year for him. Um, when he talks about striking out and that type of stuff, you know, he had to transition to, to the style that we teach at NEO, and a lot of it's about discipline and, and where you're hitting the lineup and what the expectations we have of you as a base runner, as a, and he's unique in the sense that he also has a chance to drive in runs. You know, a lot of times, uh, what you want out of your, 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 your leadoff hitter is to have a high on-base percentage, which he did not have last year, but he did for, for have a lot of RBIs, and he did have a lot of key hits. I know that he's one of the guys you know, he hit a, a key grand slam down at, at Eastern when we won our conference down there last year. And, you know, he was one of the guys you're going, okay, do I bunt him? No, I don't bunt him because he's got a chance to hit a ball out of the yard too. So he doesn't just have the tool of speed now. He does have strength. And sometimes that's beneficial for him. Sometimes he's got to understand which hitter he is at which moment. You know, when there's big guys in scoring position, he's a good RBI guy. When there's nobody on, you need him to be a good get-on-base guy and go steal bases and get himself in the scoring position. But he can still do that. You know, when he hits a ball in a gap, it's a double. If it gets middle of the way through the gap, he's got a chance for a triple every time. Um, when you talk about goals for him, you know, if all things went right, you know, and, and, and baseball's a long season and, you know, there's injuries, there's opportunities, there's lack of opportunities. You know, he has the ability to go out and steal 50 or 60 bases. If he goes out and has a great year and goes past that, then yeah, he might run 
you know, run the risk of jumping into that elite category where he breaks the record. Mm -hmm. That's always a possibility. But I also know one thing about him, that he's not going to go try to break that record at the risk of costing his team a championship. Yeah. That's the most important thing too. Team first. Really good team player. So um, he's got a lot of talent. We hope that in May, for his sake, as, at his age and being out, you know, being out of high school for a few years, that he's got a chance to sign professionally. We thought it was going to happen last year. Um, typical of the draft. There's no more draft and follow. You can't ever tell what's going to happen. People tell you, hey, we turned him in, and then when it gets in the war room, that guy that turned him in is not the guy pushing him, and, and I don't know who that is, so we're going to go to the next guy, you know, especially after the first 15 or 20 rounds where the money's not as big a factor. Uh, you know, it just could be anybody. So um, I feel like if you go, he's had a year under, under his belt. I think right now he's kind of primed to really go out and have a good year. He's improved himself. Uh, he gives he gives too much credit to other people. He is the one that's worked hard on his swing. Um, we've talked to him, given him some ideas, but he goes out there and works every day at it. I don't work for him. Uh, he goes out every day and works on his arm because last year we were on his case all the time that hey, you know, you just don't throw it very well. That's going to be a factor in your draftability. Um, he you know, and he goes out there and he he takes a bucket of balls and throws 100 balls into home plate, and the 100 balls to third base goes, picks them up himself. He does it on his own. So, you know, sometimes greatness is a lonely path. He understands that, but sometimes you got to set aside a lot of the fun of college that the other guys are having to, to try to chase this goal. And part of that is the maturity that he has. He's got a really high level of, of, of accountability and responsibility as a young man that's unique. You know, where most guys are going out looking for a place to go have a beer and do something else. This guy's taking care of business and, and going to the cage and getting ready to, for for a season. So, we we feel like you know he's in a good good position to to either go to Grambling, but it was a great offer and a great opportunity for him, uh, as well as you know look at that draft in May as well. All right, both of you, I wish you well this season and uh, good luck to both of you. Thank you. Thank you.